Greetings. Um, a lot of people have heard of IQ, Intelligent Quotient, to measure how smart someone is, uh, but I recently read a book called The Science of Evil by Simon Baron Cohen. Uh, he's the cousin of Sasha Baron Cohen, who plays Borat and Bruno, but uh, apparently he's a neuroscientist. He mostly focuses on um, autism disorders, or the autism spectrum. And uh, this book, uh, The Science of Evil, is about uh, empathy and how uh, the root of all evil, and evil being a non-scientific term, is not, you know, money or whatever people usually say it is, but it's uh, a lack of empathy. And that uh, the people who we judge the most evil in our society, psychopaths, narcissists, and he also puts borderline personality sort of there as well, are the people with zero negative uh, empathy. So on a numerical scale of zero to six, that's the numerical scale he has, uh, the people who are zero would be the ones who have the least empathy. And that there's different types of people there. Uh, those are the three major uh, negative zeros. Um, since I was once diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, uh, I don't think I actually have zero empathy there. In fact, I'm not really sure if I have that. Um, <laughs> I've been diagnosed with a lot of different things, though, so who knows. But uh, those are the three, and of course psychopaths are the ones who are uh, the scariest there. I think uh, there's one in a hundred people in the U.S. are psychopaths. You walk down the street and pass a hundred people, one of them's a psychopath. That's scary. And also they make up, I think, 25% of the prison population in this country, and 4% of the CEOs in this country, which is just, just imagine, just one in a hundred people has no empathy whatsoever. They, they, they just cannot be reasoned with, they cannot be cured, they are just completely evil. <laughs> yeah, and people wonder why I'm a misanthrope. Anyway, <laughs> but, um, so those are them. And there's also uh, zero positive, which are people who have zero empathy, and yet they still have positive aspects to them, and mostly groups uh, Asperger's, people with Asperger's, which is a high-functioning form of autism, which is something I also think I don't know. A lot of people say they have, like, oh, maybe I have Asperger's, and they're really just, they just want an excuse to be jerks. <laughs> but I, I, a lot of the um, symptoms of Asperger's are ones I have. Uh, anyone who's ever talked to me on a webcam knows that I rock back and forth a lot, and uh, various things like that. But I don't think I have zero empathy. In fact, uh, in the book, which I have on my little Kindle, yay, uh, by the way, I, I didn't think I'd like having a Kindle. I ended up buying one just because I'm running out of room for books. But uh, I, I really do like the, the Kindle that I have so far. I, I have a bunch of free books from Project Gutenberg on there, and I've bought, uh, I don't know, how many books have I bought? Like maybe four or five so far for it, and uh, I like it so far. It's pretty good. Uh, but anyway, uh, so I have the book on there, and um, I've been reading from the 0 to 6 scale on empathy, and level 3, I think, describes me the best. I'm just going to read that verbatim now. At level 3, a person knows they have difficulty with empathy and may try to mask or compensate for this, perhaps avoiding jobs or relationships where there are constant demands on their empathy. Not really my job. <laughs> uh, where there are constant demands on their empathy. Uh, making the effort to pretend to be normal can be exhausting and stressful. That does fit me. Uh, they may avoid others at work because social interaction is so hard and just keep their head down and do their work in the hope that this doesn't bring them into contact with too many other people. Yeah, that actually describes me to a T. Not just at work, but back when, in, like, high school. But, I mean, I have, um, there's, like, a group of people I'm comfortable with, uh, friends, certain members of my family, and everyone else I just don't want to talk to at all. <laughs> I don't like interacting with new people in general, unless they're an attractive woman who I would like to date or something. But otherwise, no. And even then, it's just kind of hard for me for other nervousness reasons and lack of confidence. Um, <laughs> where was I? Oh, they may realize they just don't understand jokes that everyone else does. Ah, oh, that's not true. I, I usually understand jokes. <laughs> um, that other people's facial expressions are hard to read. Uh, sometimes I have a problem with that. Uh, mostly with women, I'll admit that. And that they are never quite sure what's expected of them. Small talk, chatting, and conversation may be a nightmare for someone at this level because there are no rules for how to do it, and it is also unpredictable. I, I'd actually despise small talk. I, I had a video... I have a video on here, it's called uh, Useless uh, Social Etiquette, I think I called it. And I, I talk a little bit about how much I hate small talk, so that one hits me to a T. Uh, when they get home, the relief that comes from no longer having to fake being like everyone else is huge. Y yeah, I'll admit that. Uh, they just want to be alone to be themselves. Uh, it's not that I want to be alone, it's that I'm more comfortable alone. I'd love to be with people who I'm comfortable with, but that doesn't really happen all that much. Anyway, uh, there is a test in this book 
for uh, the empathy test, the empathy quotient test. And I think it's like 30 questions or so. And uh, let me just shoot a bit what it looks like, uh, It'll if it'll focus. Okay, so you have a question, and you have to choose strongly agree, slightly agree, slightly disagree, or strongly disagree. And there's a way to uh, score it on the back to see where you score on that empathy uh, range. And so, uh, just kind of for fun, and just because I think it might be interesting to people who have never heard of this test to know what the questions are, um, I am going to uh, take this test. I'll read off the questions, and I'll say what my answer is and why. And uh, this will either be interesting to people or completely boring. And if it's completely boring, you can hit stop at any time. Question one. I can easily tell if someone else wants to enter a conversation. I'm going to put slightly disagree on there. Um, just because uh, sometimes people are entering conversations just... Um, to be polite, like, hi, how are you? They don't actually want to sit and talk with you. They're just doing it to be polite, something I also hate. So I'm going to put slightly disagree on there. I don't always know. Two, I find it difficult to explain to others things that I understand easily when they don't understand it the first time. Um, I'm going to put strongly agree there, because I do... There are things that I understand... Um, maybe about, like, history or movie, especially movies, probably, and people don't, uh, they don't quite understand it, and I have a hard time explaining to them, um, what it is, because I, like, especially when people ask me the definitions of words that I use, sometimes I'll use a big word, uh, this, this week I used, uh, Kafka-esque, uh, to my, to one of my bosses, and she didn't know what it meant, and, um, <laughs> she ended up just looking it up, uh, by herself, but I had a hard time explaining, uh, what that meant, especially since she had never read Kafka. And to me, it's like, I, well, it, the word just means itself. It, I don't usually have to uh, reverse engineer a definition for something I know, so yeah. Three, I really enjoy caring for other people. Um, I'm going to put slightly disagree. Uh, I enjoy uh, caring for people that I care about. Strangers, no. I don't give a fuck about strangers. <laughs> But, like, if I'm, I'm dating a girl and she's sick, then, yeah, making her a sandwich or, um, you know, cuddling with her and watching a movie that she likes, but I don't. That's something I would do. But otherwise, strangers, people, and just, uh, fuck them. <laughs> Four, I find it hard to know what to do in a social situation. I'm going to put strongly agree on that one. I just, uh, <laughs> if it's a social situation with people I know, again, friends or family members that I'm comfortable with, then I know what's expected of me, but with people I don't usually know, I, I have a hard time with that. Five, people often tell me that I went too far in driving my point home in a discussion. Um, strongly disagree. I don't, I, I think I know my limits there. Six, it doesn't bother me too much if I am late meeting a friend. Uh, strongly disagree. I, I, um, I'm very big on punctuality. <laughs> Seven, friendships and relationships are just too difficult, so I tend not to bother with them. Um, I'm going to put slightly agree on there. I don't have many friendships, <laughs> and I certainly haven't had many relationships. Uh, I do find um, I do find them difficult to a certain extent, uh, but it's not that I don't want to bother with them. It's just that it, it's hard, and so I don't end up with a lot of them. Eight. I often find it difficult to judge if someone is rude or polite. Um, strongly disagree, I can usually tell that. Nine, in a conversation I tend to focus on my own thoughts rather than on what my listener might be thinking. Uh, I'm going to put slightly agree there. Um, <laughs> if I'm in a conversation and um, usually I have to keep... Um, I don't I actually don't know how to describe that, so that goes back to the uh, <laughs> hard time describing what I'm thinking about. Um, it's not that I. It's not that I don't care what the other person is saying to me in a conversation. It's more like um, I never leave my own mind. I'm too self-conscious about what I ha what I'm supposed to say or what I need to say to move the conversation forward. That it's hard for me to get outside of my mind in that way. Ten. When I was a child, I enjoyed cutting up worms to see what would happen. Um, it wasn't worms. It was ants. So I'll put strongly agree. <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess this is kind of sick. But um, when I was a kid. Um, the house that I grew up in uh, for the first couple of years of my life it was my grandparents' house. Um, there were tons of ants in the um, basically there was the house proper, 
and there was like a sort of like a, a patio that was sort of walled in and it was always ants and they had these little uh, snippers I called them they were like um they're like not really scissors but they were tiny they could fit between my thumb and forefinger and they had like little blades on them they were sort of used to make like small cuts in paper and I used to cut the ants in half that's a little psychopathic isn't it they just ants fuck them <laughs> but but I did do that as a kid and in hindsight I'm like what the fuck was I doing um, question 11. I can pick up quickly if someone says one thing but means another. Um, hmm. I don't know, because if it's sarcasm, I can definitely pick that up. If it's um, a metaphor, I can pick that up. So I'm not... I'm going to um, slightly disagree, because I'm... I, I have a feeling there's probably a scenario there where that's true, but in most cases, I can usually tell through tone of voice. 12. It is hard for me to see why some things upset people so much. Uh, I'm gonna put slightly agree. Um, <laughs> uh, simply because um, there there have been times where I've offended people um, through maybe blunt honesty, <laughs> I suppose, and, I, and there's never any malice behind it, or even if it's something that didn't relate to them at all. Um, <laughs> Like, I remember I, I had an argument once, and it's still something I believe, that any woman can get sex anytime she wants, regardless of attractiveness or whatever, as long as her standards are low enough. And this really offended a friend of mine, uh, probably not so much my point, but maybe the way I worded it, and I didn't really understand it because I, I wasn't talking about her, I wasn't, and it had nothing to do with her whatsoever, but for some reason she took it personally. And I don't think she understood my point either, so that there goes another thing there. Uh, 13. I find it easy to put myself in somebody else's shoes. Um, alright, I'll put slightly disagree on that. Uh, I work in a job where, um, a lot of the people I talk to on the phone are idiots who, uh, create their own easily avoidable self-created problems, and I have a hard time putting myself in their shoes because I'm not that dumb. <laughs> and that's that's as much as I'll go into without describing my job too much in detail, but um, I, I have a hard time empathizing with the people I talk to on the phone there. Fourteen. I'm good at predicting how someone will feel. Um, I guess I'll put slightly agree, because um, usually uh, you can always, if, if you insult somebody, they're going to be mad. If you do something nice for them, they'll be happy. <laughs> so usually I... I I agree, but sometimes you can be off. Fifteen, I'm quick to spot when someone in a group is feeling awkward or uncomfortable. Uh, I'll put slightly agree there. Um, <laughs> usually it's because they're acting like me, so I know, <laughs> I know through, uh, I don't know, mirroring or whatever. Sixteen, if I say something that someone else is offended by, I think that's their problem, not mine. Um, should I put strongly agree on there? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, again, it's because probably I'm saying something. Well, I'll 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 put this in terms of profanity. Um, I like using various swear words. Um, for example, cunt. <laughs> and um, my feeling about swear words is that a word, j just divorced of any context, a symbol, a single word, is only as offensive as the person who hears it. It's just a collection of sounds and letters that have been put together, and just saying the word with no meaning, it doesn't, it, it, you invest it with, you invest that word with its power. That word has no power beyond it. Like, how come if I change one letter and it's punt or hunt, uh, it's fine, but I change, but then I change the first sound, the first letter, and suddenly it's the most offensive word in the world. So sometimes I'll use, you know, cunt, fuck, whatever. <laughs> various words, uh, if I call a, a stupid person, a, a non-mentally handicapped stupid person a retard, and that will offend somebody. And I, I don't think it's yet, because I, it's like you can choose whether to be offended by a word or not. I mean, it's it's different if you're pointing at someone and going, hey, you're a fucking asshole, versus if you stub your toe and say, oh, fuck, as far as the offensive. So, I think context. So, that's, that's just an example I thought of, uh, the swear words I use. 17. If anyone asked me if I liked their haircut, I would reply truthfully, even if I didn't like it. Strongly agree. I've, that's actually happened a lot of times with me. <laughs> I mean, I don't go say, oh, wow, that's the ugliest thing in the world, but I'll say, like, eh, I didn't really like it. 
I don't know. Would you want to walk around with an ugly ass haircut because people have been humoring you? I don't know. I know people don't like my hair, but I don't care. I just think honesty is better. 18. I can't always see why someone should have felt offended by a remark. Um, should that be strongly agree or slightly agree? Uh, I'll go slightly agree, because there are some remarks, like, if I actually point to someone and say something mean to them, I'll understand, but I get the sort of, like, the word thing goes in there. 19. Seeing people cry doesn't really upset me. Um, I'm gonna put slightly disagree. It, it really depends on who's crying. 20. I am very blunt with some people, which some people take to be rudeness, even though this is unintentional. Uh, strongly agree. This goes back to what I was saying earlier. 21. I don't tend to find social situations confusing. Um, slightly disagree. Some, some of these are just going over the same stuff again, so I don't have to elaborate on them too much. 22. Other people tell me I am good at understanding how they are feeling and what they are thinking. Um... I'm going to put slightly disagree, only because I can think of a small number of people who actually have told me that, but I think the larger population would probably say no, <laughs> or like larger uh, acquaintances and stuff like that would say no, but my smaller core group of friends, uh, back when I had friends, <laughs> I, I still have some, but <laughs> one, uh, but this would say yes. My best friend especially, I think, would say yes to this. Uh, 23. When I talk to people, I tend to talk about their experiences rather than my own. Um, slightly disagree, uh, only because, um, mostly I'll, I'll ask questions about their experiences, but then I'll bring it back to me as in, oh, I understand because this such and such happened to me. Or if they're telling a, a or obviously if they're telling a story, I'll ask for more details if it's interesting, you know? Um... No, it, it, I guess that depends on the on the context, but uh, for the for the most part, I I, I think I do. Uh, it upsets me when it, I to see an animal in pain. Uh, strongly agree. I, I I hate seeing animals in pain. I, I like animals. Twenty five. I am able to make decisions without being influenced by people's feelings. Uh, strongly agree. I try to divorce myself from that and try to be. It doesn't always work, but I try to be a, a little bit uh, logical or rational in my decisions, but sometimes I'm clouded by my own emotions, but not so much anyone else's. The more I answer these questions, the more I kind of realize I'm a self-important asshole. <laughs> this should just be called the asshole test, right? 26. I can easily tell if someone else is interested or bored with what I am saying. I'm going to put slightly agree. Uh... Occasionally, I'll be talking about something, and I'll realize I don't give a shit about it, and I'll change subjects quickly. 27. I get upset if I see people suffering on news programs. Uh, slightly disagree. I usually don't. <laughs> at, at some point, like, if you watch, um, uh, as I'm making this video, there's been a lot of tornadoes uh, in the country, and before that, there was an earthquake. It's, it's, there's so many tragedies around the world that after a while, you just become numb to them. It's like, if I don't know these people, you know. It's sort of like something I say, uh, if 40,000 people die every day, I can't weep for all of them. But uh, it, it really sort of depends on the context. It's sort of like why um, in those commercials with the uh, starving children in Africa, uh, just focusing on one child, giving them a name and focusing on this one child, that is actually more powerful to people than uh, showing like a thousand starving children in a field. Um, Sam Harris actually wrote about this in his book, The Moral Landscape. He's also a neuroscientist. About how, for some reason, it's something built into us through evolution that uh, we can feel more empathy for one single person than an entire population of people. So bring it. That's why in those commercials they usually just point to one person because that'll imp imply more people to send money. Or that's why you sponsor one child in those commercials rather than just sending general money to an organization. Um, Twenty-eight. Friends usually talk to me about their problems as they say I'm very understanding. Uh, strongly agree. Uh, especially my best friend does that a lot. 29. I can sense if I am intruding even if the other person doesn't tell me. Um, slightly disagree. Sometimes I'll walk up to, say, two people and I'll, I'll think I'm okay, and but they're actually having a conversation and they're too polite to tell me to leave. 30. Sometimes people tell me that I have gone too far with teasing. Uh, strongly disagree. I don't think that's ever happened. 
31. Often, other people often say that I am insensitive, though I don't always see why. Um, no one's actually ever told me that. I guess I'll go strongly disagree. I'm actually kind of surprised no one's ever told me that. 32. If I see a stranger in a group, I think that is up to them to make an effort to join in. Uh, slightly agree. I usually, yeah. 33. I usually stay emotionally detached when watching a film. Uh, strongly disagree. Uh, that's one of the places where I'm most emotional, because I'm such a movie geek. And I especially, I, I love being emotionally involved in a film. 34. I can tune into how someone else uh, feels rapidly and intuitively. Um, I'll put slightly disagree. I wouldn't say rapidly. <laughs> 35. I can easily work out what another person might want to talk about. Um, they, I'll put slightly agree. Obviously, they have to give me some hints. I'm not just going to pick it out of nowhere. 36. I can tell if someone is masking their true emotion. Hmm. Um... Uh, that usually depends on tone of voice and body language. Uh, I'll put slightly agree. 37. I don't consciously work out the rules of social situations. Um, strongly disagree. I, I, I tend to try and work things out <laughs> on a conscious level for that kind of thing. 38. I am good at predicting what someone will do. Hmm. It depends on the person. I think. Um... I guess I can slightly agree, but that could really go either way. 39. I tend to get emotionally involved with a friend's problems. Uh, strongly agree. And 40. I guess this is the last question. Uh, I can usually appreciate the other person's viewpoint even if I don't agree with it. Uh, I'll put slightly agree. Uh, there are, there are um, exceptions to this, usually political or religious, but otherwise uh, I, can, I can usually uh, appreciate it. It, it. It depends on how they reach their viewpoint. And so I'm going to score this and see what I came up with. Well, I scored my empathy test, and yeah, not good. <laughs> I scored a 27. Now let's look at what the scores mean. How to interpret your EQ score. 0 to 32, low. Most people with Asperger syndrome or high-functioning autism score about 20. So I'm seven points above them. Yeah, I probably have Asperger's, don't I? <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> I was misdiagnosed by a lot of people. <laughs> All right. Average range, 33 to 52. Most women score about 47, and most men score about 42. Oh, boy. <laughs> I really am a jerk, aren't I? I have no empathy whatsoever for other people. I'm a selfish, selfish jerk. No wonder women hate me. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> 27. The, ma the highest score you can get is 80, and I got a 27. I am seven points above Asperger's. <laughs> oh, wow, I do not like the results of that test. Oh. Well, that explains a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um... I have been diagnosed as borderline personality disorder, bipolar, major depressive disorder. Um, are those the three I've mostly had? Yeah. No one ever told me Asperger's. Huh. I actually did take a separate uh, test on Asperger's. It was very, very long, and it came up that I was pretty high on that spectrum as well. That that was when I first took, and I took that as a lark, because I have a fr an internet friend who also has Asperger's. And um, so I kind of took it on a lark, and I was surprised by, especially uh, questions about eating habits really affected me. But, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I have Asperger's. Because despite being this low, I'm pretty sure I'm not a psychopath, and I'm, I'm not a narcissist, because I, I do hate myself. So, <laughs> so borderline is the only uh, negative um, one that could maybe sort of kind of fit me. But the, the more I read about it, the more Asperger's seems to fit. This is the definition of Asperger's syndrome that's in the Oxford English Dictionary. A rare and relatively mild autistic disorder characterized by awkwardness in social interaction, pedantry in speech. Uh, pedantic is a, um, a uh, preoccupation with the minute details. And preoccupation with very narrow interests. 
I don't know, do, do movies count as a narrow interest? I'm not sure. Uh, there's two dictionaries on this Kindle. Uh, let me see if I can find, uh, what's the other one? Uh, home. <laughs> you can see what books are on my Kindle now if you're interested as well. Um, here's uh, New Oxford American. Here it is. A developmental disorder related to autism and characterized by higher than average intellectual ability coupled with impaired social skills and restrictive repetitive patterns of interest and activities. Yeah, I probably have that. <laughs> oh, well that explains a lot. <laughs>